Hello students, welcome to E-Part Shala. In today's module, we shall be exploring approaches to political theory focusing on the theory of postmodernism. As we realize political theory remains a contested domain and has various approaches and ideologies that seek to explore the terms political as well as theory as well as the couple of political theory. The other the approach that we shall be looking at today is postmodernism. In the 1960s and 70s, postmodernism emerged as a critique of positivism in social sciences. It sought to criticize the unity of social sciences that positivists had built upon. It looked at various chaotic as well as other irrational elements that social sciences was also comprised of. Postmodernism looks to enrich the theory of politics and further make it more holistic and make our understanding more well-rounded in how we approach the political and the theoretical aspects of the same. A genealogical approach is not involved in tracking down the origin of a particular phenomena, but they try to unravel the discursive practices that have led to the acceptance of certain things as natural and normal. Foucault's study of madness and Butler's deconstruction of gender that is gender trouble, are examples of this approach. Political theory has been enriched with multiple approaches and traditions that tend to analyze and understand politics in different and often contradictory ways. Each of these approaches have certain core premises and postulates that define its identity. However, each of them is also extremely variegated and sometimes informed by other traditions. Social science was subject to criticism in 60s and 70s. While some critics challenged positivism in social sciences, others critiqued the unifying and objectivist paradigm of science itself. Since the 1980s, postmodernism has been a significant influence in social sciences, including political theory. Stephen Seidman and David Wagner explain postmodernism in social sciences. In the social sciences, postmodernism describes the critique of the modernist project to the ground and unify the social sciences. In its critique of modernist social science, postmodernists reconsider the relationship between scientific knowledge, power and society as well as the relationship between science, critique and narrative. The postmodern critique therefore underlines the destabilizing unity of humanity, the individual as the center of history and society, the idea of universal truth, and the belief in social progress intrinsic to enlightenment. This postmodern knowledge contests disciplinary boundaries, the separation of science, literature, and ideology, as well as the division between knowledge and power. Jane Bennett refers to three usages of postmodernism in contemporary times. Firstly, as a sociological designation for an epochal shift in the way collective life is organized from centralized and hierarchical control towards a network structure. Secondly, as an aesthetic genre, that is, a literature that experiments with non linear narration, a playful architecture of mixed styles an appreciation of popular culture that complicates the distinction between high and low. Thirdly, as a set of philosophical critiques of teleological and or rationalist conceptions of nature, history, power, freedom and subjectivity. Bennett argues that postmodernism refers to all the above in political theory, but more intensively the third meaning. At its most basic level, postmodernism is opposed to meta narratives, totalities, and grand theories. In that sense, many postmodern thinkers refute the idea of theory itself, for theories are grand narratives. Bennett outlines the following as the main critiques of postmodern approach to political theory despite the claims of the genre towards infinite diversity and subjectivism. Firstly, postmodern approach 
often takes the form of genealogical studies, which reveal how discursive practices and conceptual schemata are embedded with power relations and how these cultural forms constitute what is experienced as natural or real. Sidman writes, and I quote, These are historical critical analysis tracing the making of identities, selves, social norms and institutions which focus on the role of medical and human sciences in the shaping of a disciplinary society. Foucault, Judith Butler and Ferguson all follow this approach. A genealogical approach is not involved in tracking down the origin of a particular phenomena, but they try to unravel the discursive practices that have led to the acceptance of certain things as natural and normal. Foucault's study of madness and Butler's deconstruction of gender, that is gender trouble, are examples of this approach. Identities and norms are therefore constructions that have sedimented into ways of behavior, language and institutions that are resistant to modify, revise or oppose them. Genealogy also dismantles the epistemic privilege of the Western canon, for it challenged notions of rationality, human agency, etc. Secondly, postmodernism is interested in exploring the indeterminate or the chaotic that is always attached to the dominant reality. The invisible in the Merleau-Ponty, the semiotic in Kristeva, the sexual difference in Irigare are examples of the same. These indeterminacies upset the widely held normative consensus in politics and offer ways of resistance. Judith Butler's Memesis is a case worth mentioning. Butler contends that even as we repeat norms, a point may come where there will be a rupture of norms. Moving on, differences are central to the postmodern approach to political theory. Postmodernism is not merely about acknowledgement of difference, but difference is identified as the key to politics by virtue of an ongoing process that generates more positivities. Postmodernism is characterized by an incredulity towards meta-narratives. This entails dismissal of a linear history of progress, as well as the rejection of a definitive interpretation of history. Or as Christopher Butler points out, these narratives are contained in or implied by major philosophies such as Kantianism, Hegelianism and Marxism, which further argue that history is progressive and that knowledge can liberate us, and further that all knowledge has a secret unity. For example, Lyotard accuses Habermas, his a conception of universal consensus as a terroristic conformity. Thus, even if they have a descriptive account of the society, they are opposed to a final end or telos. Also, nothing is outside complexities and indeterminacies. Contingency as opposed to necessity becomes the key to postmodern approach. For example, Post-Marxists like Laclau and Mouf do not believe in the necessity of a revolution central to Marxism. On the contrary, their idea of radical democracy is based on contingent selves as well as contingent alliances that also do not uphold the ontological superiority of any group. Butler captures this aspect of postmodernism when she writes, and I quote, Postmodernism thus involved a highly critical epistemology hostile to any overarching philosophical or political doctrine and strongly opposed to those dominant ideologies that help to maintain the status quo. It opposes all closures and fixed categories. Contradictions and differences become the hallmark of postmodernism. Postmodernism also dismantles the binary between the transcendental and the immanent. While metaphysical theory of Kant and others have made transcendental claims, postmodern studies deal with the immanent without reintroducing the transcendental. A common example 
could be the preoccupation of the postmodern theory with the politics of the body when the liberals mainly dealt with that of the mind. Postmodernism rests itself on the process of becoming an open-ended creative process in which the subject is continually in the process of becoming a subject. The non-fixivity of subjectivity also implies that one is not defined by a fixed essential identity. The absence of a fixed self and an essence to the self also directs a different form of politics in the postmodern approach. Postmodernism is generally identified with fragmentation and renegotiation of meanings. As Lyotard suggests, postmodernism entails a decentering of the subject and the social world. The ahistorical standpoint of an abstract mind and universal knowledge is challenged by localized and knowledges as well as the decentering of the subject marked by multiple and contingent subject positions. The metaphysics of immanence also challenges the distinction between the human and the non-human. It displaces human beings from the center of the universe. Furthermore, if liberals made human beings as the foundational identity, postmodern approach denies the fixity of such identity as well. Donna Haraway's cyborg feminism points to the instability of the category of human. Haraway describes human beings as cyborgs, a mixture, a hybrid of animal and machine, language and effect, culture and biology. She goes on to say, we are viewed instead as particularly complex and reflexive formation, differing from the other forms in significant degree, but not in kind. Postmodern theory is generally deemed to be anti-science by virtue of its resistance to an objective truth. This is best represented by Derrida's idea of deconstruction, that truth itself is always relative to the differing standpoints and predisposing intellectual frameworks of the judging subject. The death of the author in postmodernism entails that meanings of the text are properties of the interpreters and not the author herself or himself. Derrida repudiated logocentricism implying the fixing of meanings in text. This in turn also implies the alterability or contingency of meanings. However, others believe that postmodernism is not anti-science. It believes only in one kind of science, indeterminate and complex and non-linear. Postmodern theory is also therefore non-linear. Society is perceived as an incompletely structured system, an open system susceptible to unpredictable encounters and the periodic emergence of new formations. On the whole, Postmodernism is also marked for its opposition to the empirical claims of science, the objectivity and the universality of knowledge. Science is also a social construct, a body of knowledge embodies the views of the dominant in postmodern perspective. Science is yet another discourse, a discursively constructed set of statements implying that like any other discourse, the neutral science is also imbued with power. The opposition to grand narratives and the logic of necessity is also reflected in the debunking of macropolitics and a celebration of micropolitics. Politics is mainly articulated in micropolitical activities and hence is different from liberal and Marxist approaches. Postmodernism's main focus is not on institutions and structures. The major focus areas are media, military training, intersubjective relationships, etc. The key targets of micropolitics include bodily effect, social tempers, political moods, and cultural sensibilities. This also explains how politics gets redefined in terms of somatic and affective dimensions. 
The postmodern approach therefore engages with the changing of the micropolitical settings so as to alter the macropolitical possibilities. Postmodern approaches to political theory also deal with power differently. While liberals perceive power as located in the state and Marxists see power as primarily flowing from class politics, postmodern writers convey that power is not located in an identifiable center. It is diffused and pervasive. Power is capillary in nature. Foucault's distinction between a juridical power, that is power embodied in the state and its institutions, and biopower are worth discussion here. In his work, Discipline and Punishment, Foucault points to the biopower as disciplining and normalizing, unlike juridical power, that is regulatory. Postmodern approach therefore locates power not only in institutions and the sovereign, but in everyday practices that constitute and normalize subjectivity. Interestingly, the subject is constituted by power relations. The very same power relations also offer room for resistance to those norms that constitute us. The open-ended nature of categories has been perceived as a challenge to collective politics also due to the commitment to anti-foundationalism and anti-essentialism. Anti-foundationalism is explained by Seedman as the rejection of an ahistorical Archimedean standpoint to claim or critique knowledge. In other words, postmodernism rejects the idea of an a priori or pre-existing category of self that is at the center of knowledge and politics. Postmodern writers are divided on the architecture of collective politics in the light of anti-foundationalism and anti-essentialism. Derrida's deconstruction of binaries and Rorty's dismantling of subject-object dualism in knowledge are examples of the same. Postmodernism is also against the fixed essence of many categories. Thus, they do not believe in pre-existing categories like class, women, or even humans. While Butler is opposed to any kind of essentialism, but views foundations as permanently contestable, Pivak makes a case for strategic essentialism, that is essentialism only for strategic reasons and purposes. Yet another postmodernist, William Connolly, speaks of politics in the nature of rhizomatic structures, wherein social life is constituted by multiple minorities with divergent moral traditions and ontologies and come together for pragmatic purposes. Jane Bennett explains rhizomatic politics. A rhizomatic politics does not have at its regulative ideal a general consensus. It is inspired rather by the vision of mobile constellations whose members support common policies but not necessarily all for the same reasons and who attempt to render themselves more open to responsive engagement with alternative faiths, sensualities, gender practices, ethnicities and so on. Let us summarize whatever we have learned from this module. We realize postmodernism as an approach offers diverse views and opinions in understanding political theory. Various scholars such as Foucault, Judith Butler, Bennett and Ferguson have tried to underline the subjectivities prevalent within the strain of postmodernism itself. In fact, in its heyday of development in the 1980s, it was this diversity of views against the positivist approach of social sciences that made postmodernism truly relevant. Postmodernism tries to explore various concepts of ideology, knowledge, power, etc., which have, which have not received as much attention within the domains of political theory. Furthermore, it tries to go against the teleological concept of political theory as well as go against the idea of meta-narratives to focus on what it is that micropolitics truly stand for. Furthermore, theorists like Judith Butler have explored what the chaotic elements within the political theory are. Furthermore, 
postmodernism remains a very open ended approach thereby bringing ideas and opinions that have remained on the margins within the fold of political theory thereby making it more relevant and holistic in the contemporary times postmodernism thus offers an extremely relevant way of understanding political theory and makes our understanding of the same extremely enriching thank you